Okay, number three, four. The product of six and a number y. I saw most people writing this, which is great. So that's six times y. That's a product between six and y. Um, to short it up, I know we're all aware we can write six next to y, and that's understood to mean that we're multiplying six times the number y. You could write this, right? Does this mean times? Yeah. But does it look confusing? Yeah. 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 yeah, so we're gonna not use this hardly ever at all anymore. And we'll just go six right next, right next to a y, and there it is. Am I going to write it out for you? It's there. It's written in your books. Three less than the square of a number B. Okay, the first thing is this word square. What does that mean? I mean, sort of that, that word square. Yeah. It says square of a number p, then it's p squared. The square of a number would be you're squaring a number, p squared. The square of p would be p squared. The square of 3 would be 3 squared. <coughs> okay. Well, I saw a few of these. They're way to rise because it about, sounds very similar. Is this the square of p? Yeah. No, that's square. That's square root of p. This is the square root of p. Root. Okay. okay. Square root of p, not the square of p. What does it mean to say three less than that? Minus three. Minus three. If you take away three from that thing, you have three less than that thing. If you have 12 apples, and later you have three less apples, then you'll have nine apples. Just subtract three. Number 19, let's look at number 19. It's a simple one. Number of days left in a week after D days. Live through D days in a week. Instead of participating, I hope you really, really come. How many days are in a week? Seven. 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 And if we have, if it's been D days already, four days already, you subtract four from seven, there's three days left. It's been two days already, you subtract two from seven, there's five days left. You just subtract whatever the number of days that have gone by so far, two, seven. Okay. Um, let's 
write an expression. Let's talk about tests again. What, what would be an expression if you got x number correct? You got x correct. X correct on your test, on your 31 point test. Uh, can you give an expression for the percentage that you scored on that test? How do we find the percentage? Take the top and the bottom. Okay, well, what's in the top and what's in the bottom? Okay. So we're dividing. The number you can get is in the bottom? Yeah. How many can you get? Okay. How many do you get right? Okay. Is that percent? No. Okay. What do we multiply by when we want to move the decimal over twice? by 100, right? Multiply by 10, you move it over once. Multiply by 100, it moves over twice. Multiply by 1,000, it moves over three times. However many zeros are in that multiple of 10, you move it over that many times. If you multiply by 100, okay. there's an expression that gives the percentage if you know the number right. Okay. Um, here, let's change that from x to c. C of those uh, of those points correct, then that's the expression that would give your percentage. What if you don't know the number that you got correct, but instead, if you get x uh, incorrect, same thing though. What, what are we? What would be an expression that tells the percentage? Do you say something there? Yeah, it was better than me. Okay. Thirty-one minus x. Okay. What does thirty-one minus x give us? Okay. Thirty-one minus x is how many you get right. And if I want to finish out the expression, so it tells me what percentage you got. Number right over thirty-one. By 100, just like that, right? So, if we don't know the number correct, we find the number correct by counting the number that's wrong. So, this right here tells you what? It's an expression for what? Not, not Derek, somebody else? 31 minus x is an expression that tells you what? The number correct. The number correct. This tells you the number correct over the number possible times 100. That gives you the percentage. I use this every time I grade your guys' uh, tests. Get out my calculator, okay. and then I turn it on, and go into this y equals screen. Okay. So I can put uh, expressions over here, and then it'll let me put in different numbers, whatever number I choose for x, and it'll tell me the result of that expression, the value of that expression for a given num uh, value of x. So um, the first one I do is just the number correct. Because when you get your test back, you'll see there's a little box. Well, you saw it when you were taking the test. Probably there's a little box with a, a, a dash through it or a slash or whatever. And at the top, you put how many you got right. And in the bottom, 31. So those are all out of 31. Okay, so that's the first part. So I do 31 minus x. And I want to see that number. So I just leave that one alone. Okay, the other one, I want to know your percentage. So do 31 minus x. I group that together, that's up in the numerator, then what do I do? Divide by 31, multiply by 100, okay? It'll do the order of operations, first it'll do parentheses, then divide, then multiply, so it'll do just fine. Then I go into the table, and I like to go down to the bottom of the table, and if you miss uh, five problems, five points, okay, so that's the number wrong, this takes 31 minus the number wrong, gives me the number right. This takes 
the number wrong minus uh, or the number 31 minus the number wrong. Divides by 31, multiplies by 100, 83.87, so 30 or 84% I'd, I'd put on that side. Okay, so just an example of when I use expressions quite often, uh, and they just speed up my life for sure. So an algebraic expression is one that has numbers and letters. Those letters standing for other numbers. This letter stands in place of the number you get wrong on your test. Uh, this number stands in place of the number of days that have gone by. This number stands in place of some number p. This, this doesn't have a context. Um, how about one last one before we move on? Um, 21. Number of months in Y years. I need to know something about months and years. If you're not sure, try some different examples. Say, well, I don't Y years. What if it was three years, what would they do? What if it was four years, what would they do? And then let that three and that four is the specific examples become the variable. If I, if I were to ask you, say, five years, how many months are in five years? Don't say it out loud, just think to yourself, write it down. You know, what would you do with that? If I want to know how many months are in five years, what would you do? If I want to know how many months are in three years, what would you do with that? How would you find how many months there are in three years? And if you can just change out that number, five, three, two years, 12 years, that's your why, that's the thing that's changing. Why in the place of that thing? How many, uh, how many months are in two well, years? How many months are in ten years? Okay, how are you doing this? Twelve times. mind? You're doing twelve times whatever, right? Whatever it is, that's what you would do. So y becomes the whatever. Twelve times the number of years would give you the number of months in that many years. Like I said, just try that yourself. I don't have to come along and ask you that. I don't have to say how many months are in so many years. You can ask yourself that. 
Try three different examples and see what you're doing. You'll notice, oh, I'm just taking 12 and I'm multiplying it by the number of years. So I'll take those examples. I, I, if I want to know in three years, I do 12 times three. I do 12 times five for five years. I do 12 times two for two years. Oh, look at that. The thing that's changing is the number of years, and I'm just multiplying it by 12, the number of months. So that just changes to y. <coughs> over to, um, oh, you know what? We have one more thing in this section that I want to use these pictures for. Do you know what these are pictures of? Numbers. Fractions. Um, well, in real life, yeah. do you know what their numbers are? Oh, those are water fountains? Water. Yeah, they're the water fountains. The dates? Oh. Those are the dates, right? On those pieces of paper are the dates? Those are how, many water, how much water does it take? Yeah. You put a lot of thought into this, didn't you? What? You put a lot of thought into this, didn't you? I'm pretty sure people can take a few pictures of this. Yeah. How did you make that? I just took a picture. Well, it doesn't look like a little picture. Oh, it is. I mean, I just wrote the date on a piece of paper and held it up. Uh, it looks like it's animated. Well, it's not so, what are, what are these numbers telling us? What are these numbers telling us? How many plastic bottles do you have saved? Yep, so by... What? <laughs> by, uh, by filling up refillable water bottles, we're not buying plastic bottles from the store and throwing those bottles away when we're done with them. So that's what this is counting. It's counting how many bottles we're saving by doing that. Um, and it just keeps counting them. It doesn't count them per day or whatever. It doesn't stop and start over. It just has counted them since the day they were installed, which was sometime during the summer. I'm not sure exactly which day, but uh, sometime in the summer they were installed. And it just started counting from that day. Okay. And by September 17th, it had reached 2,823. And a few days later, on uh, the 2nd of October, which was yesterday, it had reached 4,655. <coughs> So what I want to put to you is, um, how many bottles are we saving per day? Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and work on it? I'm saying I don't know or I have no idea or shouting out answers. Do the work. Yeah, something there? Yeah, can you look at it in the kitchen? You want to say it out loud? No. I'm going to get braver people. Um, I got, uh, per day, I got 122.13 bottles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can say one three the one. One. One three three. One twenty two point what? One three three. Three One three repeating. Bottles <laughs> per day. I remember we keep getting in other classes. I've not actually done it myself, but I trust that it gets back. I got 148. I guess it would be maybe you counted the days differently. How many days did you get? And how many bottles did you get? 
<laughs> Bless you. If we want to know how many bottles we've saved in one day, well, we know how many bottles we've saved in how many days? Fifteen. How many bottles have we saved in fifteen days? Eighteen hundred thirty-two. Eighteen hundred and thirty-two bottles. Fifteen days. Uh, okay. And how do we get it so that it's just bottles per one day. Yes? Okay, you divide um, 1,832 by 15. Yes. And then you get 122.133. Exactly. Okay. We, if you want to know how many bottles are saved in one day, okay, maybe take this visual. I'm going to uh, flip this over. Uh, and then. Okay, so what I've done is, like, each gap here represents a day, right? And then spread across those 15 days are 1,832 bottles. So, 1,832 bottles. Um, so across those 15 days, 1,832 bottles, if you want to know how many are being saved in one day, we're just cutting up this 1,832. Into 15 pieces, right? And then looking at one of the days and seeing how many, are, how many bottles fit into that one day. And then the 15 equal pieces looking at one day to see how many are in there, yeah? Did you? When you put these pictures, did you take them at the exact same time from the same fountain? I took them at the same fountain, but I took this one um, like a little after lunchtime, and this one was like during first period. Because those could change big time. They could make a difference. Big time. Mm -hmm. Like 50 bottles. 50 well, bottles. I but like five days. <laughs> that's that's a good point. That would be valid if I was if I just took. Uh, measurements one day apart. I want to take them like 24 hours apart, right? Mm -hmm. But if I do it 15 days apart, then if I take it a few hours, take the other picture a few hours what, earlier, and you say maybe it's a 50 <coughs> bottle difference, if that's a 50 bottle difference in one day, and that 50 bottle difference is spread over those 15 days. Does that make sense? Kind of. The more days that I wait to take that measurement, the less it matters that I take it at exactly the right time. The difference gets spread out, spread really thin. Right. So the, the longer a time period I could uh, take this, the better. Yeah. Um, if we were to, because it has a lot of room to keep going, so when this, these bottles hit a maximum, does it just restart? Like everything? Like the counter? Yeah. This counter? Go on. But it this, only it can hit so many. Well, here's a good question. I like. Here's what I, I love is question. It's a good question. That's a great question. Uh, it's a question that we can investigate, right? Um, how long will it take before this counter has to start over again? How high can the counter go? Well, this is what place. Go up to 10 million bottles. Actually, if you go up to 99 million, or 99 million, 99 million, 999,000, I don't know what the programmer of this fountain decided to do. Maybe it'll die before then. 
Probably. Let's see. Can we figure out how long this will take? A year. Yeah. I didn't say can we guess how long people can take, but how can we figure it out? Because um, October 10th and October 2nd is close enough to a month that you could just take um, four, 4,600, 4,600, 500, at 55, and then divide it by uh, nine months, because that's how long we're in school. Divided by nine months? I mean, times, 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 times it by nine, that's how many we go through in a that's school about. year? Yeah. Okay, and then we could just say, we'll assume that only school years are when we use those. We use them in the summer, too, yeah? Yeah, yeah you're not going to have a, like, dependent variable. A dependent variable? <laughs> no, like, you're going to have like lapses of like when you're going to use them, not to use them like, mm -hmm. as much, so you can't figure out exactly when you're going to use them. Wait, you can estimate. Yeah. 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 Oh, you can guess. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Yeah, we can, we can guess. If, if we just go ahead and assume that 122.13 bottles will be used per day, or be saved per day, then we can figure out how many days it would take to get to 900 or 99,999. Well, what about Christmas break? And like, that's really Those are valid points, but we can get an estimate. If we take Christmas oh, break, that's the last part of the summer. You know, All those things are valid? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Christmas break is like a for what time it's used in the summer. So we'll average it out for it. We're going to have to pay $95 for what we have in one year. What? So how many years will it take? So, by Hildy's, by Hildy's calculation, we're using what? 41,895 bottles per year? Yes. If, if you go by a nine month. I would add like three more months. I just but if you take off all the time we're out of school, then we have to go to school for work. We have to go to school for work. We have to go to school for summer break and spring break. I'll just get one. I know that I'm going to put their hand over the sensor and like wait until it changes. Call him. Just call him. I'm sure that's what most of this is. People putting their finger over the sensor. Yeah. Well, that's what we want. I'm sure that's what most of this is. People putting their finger over the sensor. Yeah. We're really skewing our data. Anyway. So this is how many we're using. Could we please stop? Gosh. So we're using this many approximately per school year. Okay. So how many, if we just use that one, how many school years would it take to get to 99,999,999? How do we figure that out? <laughs> Uh, would you divide? Well, let's see, we got 41,895 bottles per school year. And we want to convert that to school years. That's, well, we could switch that and say it's one year. For 41,895 bottles times 99,999,999 bottles. How many nines is that? So we divide 99 million, so it's almost the one, by 41,895. How long did it take? And between how many years is 24? At 23, it's 26 million, 263 million, 585. So you're guessing and checking? Yeah. But if you go to 24, then it's like. Wait, it says like 23 million, 860. If you go to 24, it's like. Hey, not a billion. Yeah, what is Timothy? And then 5 million. I think you might be doing this wrong. No, I didn't. So you just divide by 41,895. Take. Keep it short. Divide that by 41,895. Oh, I didn't divide it. <laughs> it's going to take more than 2,000 years for that to happen. No, it won't. That doesn't seem right. No, it doesn't. Because it's like 8 months. I'll be dead. I can't be dead. It doesn't. Seriously, that's like two seconds. This is the only one that lasts that long, you're 
Okay, I'm glad that we cared enough to discuss that. That was fun. Okay, let's bring it back to this number, though. To this number, though. There. All right. This is 122.13 bottles per one day. Right? And when we when we talk about numbers, we're counting and things like that. One is called the unit. It's the it's the unit of measure for our number system. So because it's one unit, it's what we call a unit rate. What are some other rates that come up for you pretty regularly? Ratio. Rates are a ratio. But what is one that you can think of specifically? We have bottles per day. <coughs> bottles per year. Bottles per hour. Huh? Bottles per year. What's the rate? Kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour if you're in Canada. Mm -hmm. How about uh, feet per second? Mm -hmm. Miles per gallon? Mm -hmm. People per square mile? Miles per second per second, acceleration. Okay. This is getting pretty old. So old, telling you to stop talking. If you have his pencil, give his pencil back. Are we in third grade? Thank you. What we call a unit rate because the denominator is down to one unit of whatever the denominator is, whether it be days or hours or square miles or minutes or seconds, it's down to a single one. And if you have a rate that's not a unit rate, we just divide the numerator by the denominator and there it is. We're dividing this thing, dip into this many pieces, and so we're seeing how many of these are in one of these. 1832 split up among 15 days, you look at one of those days to see how many got saved in one day. Um, so let's go to 1.4. You to write down this with math symbols and stuff. Write it down as an algebraic statement. If you're making a statement, write it down as an algebraic statement. a few, but every one that I looked at was good, so I'll, we'll call it good. Uh, difference would be subtracting uh, a difference of two things, so the difference of z and 11, the difference would look like that, is equal to 35. 
So let's move on to uh, something else. sum of a number B and 3 is greater than A. See if you can use Max equals Viola to write that down. Should we please use our calculators for calculating? Sum me? Addition. Addition. The sum of B and 3 is greater than? Yeah? Crocodile. Three. Crocodile. Okay. <laughs> That's the only way to remember it. Crocodile likes to eat the greater thing. Right? So it's bigger than 8. Greater than 8. And, and, and by and, we're still talking about B plus 3 and is less than 2. 12. 12. 12. How, does it, how do we say less than 12? The other crocodile. The other crocodile going the other way. B plus 3 is less than 12. <laughs> So it's greater than 8, uh, and at the same time it's less than 12. We could even put the greater than 8 part over here, and it would be right in between those two things. So is this an equation? Yeah. Is it equal? No. no. So what's it called? Inequality. Inequality. Well, well, the, yeah, not, not everything that's not an equation is, a, is an expression. Uh, we got expressions, we got equations, we got inequalities. Maybe some other relationships that we can say. Um, about, um, number 10. The product. Uh, 8 and K is greater than 4. The product of 8 and K is greater than 4. Yes? It's like 8K crocodile 4. 8K crocodile which way? Pointing that way. Left. Pointing this way. Right. And then it's 4. Okay. 
I'm wrong. <laughs> it says, and no, uh, no more than. And 16. 16. Oh, so that one has a little the dash underneath it. What does the dash underneath mean? Greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Equal to. Okay. <laughs> equal or equal to. Uh, so AK is no more than 16. How can you be not more than 16? Less than it. Less than it. You could actually be 16 and still not be more than 16. So less than or equal to 16. We could put the uh, greater than four part over here too. From from least to greatest, four is on the very small end. AK is in between four and sixteen on the high end. Um, is. One fourth a solution. Is one fourth a solution to this inequality? No. How do you know? Because the inequality would be less than four. Huh? That makes less than four. What would be? Eight times one fourth. Eight times one fourth. If you put one fourth in there. We'll get 8 times 1 fourth is 2, which is less than 4, but it needs to be bigger than 4. Yeah. So it's not a solution. Uh, is 2 a solution? Yeah. yeah. Yes. No. 2 is a solution. What do we get when we put 2 in there? You get 16. It doesn't have to be less than 16? No. It can be equal to or less than 16. It can be equal to 16. Are okay. those fighting words or something? Uh, and how about is one a solution? No. Wait, yes. Wait, yes. You get eight. Eight is bigger than four. Eight is less than sixteen. So yeah. How many solutions does this inequality have? Two. Two. Two solutions? Yeah. Could you find more? Yeah. How many more could you find? A lot. A lot. Between um, four? eight and between four and sixteen. You can find between four and sixteen solutions. No, I mean like yeah, you can find solutions for between. <laughs> Never mind. That's a good uh, thing uh, to talk about. It, are the solutions from four to sixteen? Yeah. The solutions are the ones that you plug in for k. Could you plug in four for k? Yeah. No. No. Is four a solution? No. It'd be thirty-two. No, that would, yeah, thirty-two. That doesn't. So what numbers work for K? Two. What's the smallest number that can work? Two. One. 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 One is the smallest number that can work? No. Yeah. What about a half? Point five. No. Eight. Breakthrough. What would you get if you plugged in half? Just four. four. Just four. Does that work? Is that a solution? No. No, because you don't have the no. equal to sign. On the, okay. on the alligator eating the eight. So almost, so K just needs to be bigger than one half? No, bigger than one two. Oh yeah. Bigger than you. As long as it's bigger than one half. Yeah. Okay. How big can it get? Uh, Does that have to be less than two? It could be two. It could be two. It could be equal to two. So all the numbers that work for k are numbers that are bigger than one half and up to and including two. No more than two. Bigger than k, no more than two. Bigger than one half, no more than two. <coughs> so if I gave you an equation or an inequality and I Said, I, I asked you if something was a solution, if two was a solution to that thing. How would you check and see if it was a solution? Okay. You, you need this missing. Who knows? Yeah? You put it in for whatever you're replacing and try it out. You put it in for whatever's there and try it out. Guess and, well, not check. Or not, not guess, but just check. So 2x plus 3 equals 5. Okay. 
Is uh, is five a solution to this equation? No. One. We plug it in. One is. Yeah. Are there any more solutions? No. No. One is in this case in this equation the solution. It's the solution. Plug in one, we get two plus three, we get five. Um, how did you figure out that one was a solution? Huh? So you just kind of gave a little bit of a guess and it worked out, and so that was it? No, I just multiplied two. Well, how'd you come up with one? If it was two, it'd be four, and then four times two. Well, here's the thing. We're gonna, I wish all of you would stop talking. Maybe I haven't made that clear. Um, at this point, this equation is fairly simple. We can see that one is the only number that can work in there. All right. Um, but you may, you may think because you can see that, that you just can see that. You're just going to always see the answer and not have to justify your work. Okay. But we're going to, even though it's easy to see what the solution is, I'm going to have you carry out these algebraic procedures right, and get into these habits and these practices so that when more complicated equations come along, there's no way you're going to see the solution to just by looking at it. Um, and in fact, there will be equations that have several solutions, right? Like uh, x cubed plus 4x squared minus x minus 3 equals 5 has three solutions. It has three numbers that work for x. And unless you've got a lot of time on your hands, it's going to be very difficult to guess and check all those solutions. Uh, perhaps impossible, um, but if you if you stay with me and you you learn all this, you know, do the same thing on both sides kind of stuff, or really do it on the simple ones. Start out that way and justify your answer when the equations are simple. When they get to be too difficult to just see the answer, where you might say, "I just know how to do it. I don't know how to show you how to do it." Um, if you can't show me how to do it on here, you, you're not going to be able to do it on more complicated equations, and it's just going to leave you behind. So when we start to do that, and it will be soon, uh, do not fall back. Like right now, some of you are falling back on converting fractions into decimals. Okay? And sometimes it's right. Half is 0.5 they're the same. Sometimes it's wrong. One third is not 0.3. Okay? And if you're wrong, you're wrong. You're going to lose credit. You're also just going to be wrong, which is worse. Just not being correct is its own unreward. Um, so don't fall back on your habits of, oh, I can see what the answer is. I can guess and check my way through it. Give it up. Give up the guess and check. Get on the, the algebra train, because it's going to be much better if you can get these habits instilled early rather than having to learn them way later after not practicing. Connor, did you have time to work. I expect to see work happening. I will come around and 